and I will pause my Dropbox so I don't kill everything. I'm sure the internet's much faster up in the mountains in Montmorency, isn't it, mate? I don't know if we're in the mountains, but we're in the, the green area, and no, we don't. No MBN yet, unfortunately. Nice, no, disappointing. Um, welcome, everybody, to uh, this. We should probably talk to our guests at some stage, Tomo, instead of just hanging crap on each other. Welcome to uh, this is the first webinar of the year. We've had a bit of a break. Um, and oh no, it was just my goal planning one, but that's just me doing a solo thing and no one really cares about that. And of course, my mum would call me in the middle of a webinar because that's what mums do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome to our webinar today with the always inspiring and uh, collar wearing Phil Thompson, who is, I know some of you will have seen Tomo in action before either in another webinar or in a webinar we did a webinar he did with another group that we won't mention uh one at let's talk more action 19 um and you're going to see him live again today now for those of you that haven't been to an advice movement webinar before welcome uh we're going to use a mix of all the zoom features and functionality today starting with the chat box so if you haven't used that before, fire off messages into the chat. Just give us a shout out and let us know that you're here, especially if you're a first timer. Um, say hi. And we're going to use the Q&A box as well. Um, so if you do have questions, fire them off. I can see some of our Americans have joined us today, which is awesome, Tomo. So uh, no pressure, cool. mate. But the, uh, you're going live into the USA and, and we all know that they have high standards when it comes to television productions. So, um, you know, you're going to have to bring your A game. That's right. Only the best here, mate. Only the best. Uh, so guys and girls, use the Q&A if you want. Uh, some of the questions, if they're really relevant to what Tomo's talking about, will go live to them straight away. Um, otherwise, I might bring them up at the end. We'll be doing some polls as well. And in the last five minutes of the webinar, um, Tom is one of our coaches uh, at the Advice Movement. He is the video guru, as you'd expect. Um, he has put together painstakingly, um, at my request, he's put together a, uh, an online course on how to be a video ninja um, fair to say, Tomo, it, it took you a little bit longer than you thought when I said, mate, can you just knock up a quick video for me, a, a quick course for me? Yeah, you're, a, you're the master at, uh, what is it, over-promising um, how easy it was going to be. Yes. Uh, so in the last five minutes, Tomo's going to share a little bit about what you can expect in that course. But because Less Talk, More Action and the advice movement is all about action, in the chat box right now, we have a link for a one third off mates rates offer for Tomo's course. Um, that one third discount is going to be the best discount you can possibly ever get from here on in. And it is going to close as soon as the webinar ends. So after the webinar, you might be able to get a little bit of a cheeky discount, but it's not going to be as good as this. So there's that link there. I'll post it up again at the end. And that is all we're going to say about the course for now. But for now, with no further ado, I will hand the reins over to Tomo uh, and I'll sort of go into the background for a little bit and, um, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Over to you, mate. All right, cool beans. Best part of the webinar, uh, Steve getting in the background. So we're going to talk about uh, video. I'll just uh, run through a prezzo. Really keen for everyone to um, ask as many questions in the chat or the Q&A. Uh, we've got them both open. Steve will kind of jump in and out uh, if he thinks he needs to interject with any questions. Uh, but really keen to um, just really answer any questions. Um, but let's get stuck into it. So I'm going to be talking about, you know, how to use video in your business. So the things that we're going to cover today is going to go through the top five reasons uh, for video, uh, different video styles that you can use going to talk about uh, priority pyramids, so the most important things to think about when creating videos uh, and how to do really, really, really easy personalized videos that I'm going to show you in this webinar. And then, as Steve said, going to go through the video course, what's involved and what you get for it. So poll time. Steve, this is where you jump back in and we're going to ask you guys a question about, um, here we go, it's come up. So uh, three simple questions. 
Uh, first question, do you currently use video in your business, not including like our Zoom meetings or, or Skype meetings with clients? Um, the next question is, uh, what are the main reasons from stopping you from creating videos? So you can tick uh, a few of them. Um, so the answers are, you don't know where to start, cost too much to hire professionals, don't see the value in doing video and you don't have enough time. Uh, and the last one is you're scared to be in front of the camera. Third question is, uh, what motivated you to join this webinar? Really keen to understand why you signed up, why you're taking your precious time out of your business um, and investing it in this webinar. So are you just wanting to gather some ideas? Uh, are you motivated to use the equipment that you've previously bought, um, which uh, is a few of you, I'm sure, uh, and you're motivated to get started from scratch, um, or you just want to listen to my uh, amazing voice? Um, I'm guessing we're going to get no responses. So we're going to have that poll up for just a few more seconds. Um, so I hope we've got plenty of people um, completed it. I can't yeah, see no, it. No, you can't see it. It's vote central here. So we're up to 85% of our attendees voting, which is amazing. We'll just let it run for another 10 seconds. So Tomo can have a drink of water from the world's largest cup. Did you get that from the U S that looks like it's super. Oh, look at him. He didn't even know that is super sized. It's amazing. It's my water cup. All right, we've got all the votes in and I will share those results with you now. Tomo. Awesome. Okay, so we've got, we've got nine people who currently use video uh, and then 29 people uh, who don't. Uh, we've got 63% uh, said they don't know where to start. 47% um, uh, said you don't have enough time. Uh, it, well, good news is everyone does see the value in video. Um, We've got 39% of people who are scared to be in front of the camera. Um, and that's that's a, a good one uh, because it can be easily overcome. Uh, and then question three, what motivated you to join the webinar? 79% uh, just want to get some really good ideas. 42% want to get motivated to start from scratch. 16% uh, of people have bought equipment and they just want to get motivated to get started. Um, and then 6%, mum, thank you very much. Uh, or 16%, mum and dad said that they wanted to listen to my voice. So thanks for filling in that uh, poll, guys. Let's get started. So I'm going to talk about why listen to me uh, talk about videos. Um, so I'm a solo practitioner, mortgage broker and financial advisor. Uh, I do have support staff overseas and I outsource a bit of stuff. But uh, I'm not a big practice. I don't have a marketing arm. Um, to do videos, but in my business, I've created over 150 marketing videos and done thousands of personalized client videos. Um, so I've done it in real life, um, not some marketing guru who's going to tell you um, the best ROI and promise you amazing returns um, and it'd be impossible to execute on those things. I'm just going to show you really practical tips on how to execute it and what's effective in your advice business and mortgage broking business. And I'll just give you a quick snippet of some of the videos I've created. Build finance fix. Build finance fix. Build the world is gone mad fix. And today we're talking about spouse superannuation contributions. Today we're talking about superannuation co contributions. Ben Nash, for Luke Asigal, for Adrian, Hattie, for Jeremy Harper, Josh, and Sam. Lilla Thompson! My one hundred. Tax time. Ah! And I'm going to do a really quick video because it's snowing here in the office. If you worked in financial services, give me 15 cents because you would only get to keep 70 cents for every dollar that I get to keep because I'm a boy and you're a girl. What, what would be fair? What would be fair? If we swap. <laughs> if we swap. Close friends or distance traders, it becomes harder not to act, harder not to care. That is exactly what we need in this country. Watching our girls in their ballet lessons in their little outfits and their ballet shoes, it is, uh, what am I asking? <laughs> Dude, he nailed that. Yeah, that was good. Was bad. <laughs> I did it wrong. <laughs> what do you mean you forgot? <laughs> okay. 
All right, so that just gives you a rough idea of some of the videos I've created. Um, and now we're gonna go into the top five reasons uh, for video. So for me, uh, one of the main reasons to do video is authenticity. Um, as the saying goes, people will do business with people they know, like, and trust. And uh, it's my view that uh, unless you're sitting face-to-face -face with clients, uh, which we can all agree isn't very scalable, isn't very easy to do, uh, video is the number one best way to create a know, like, and trust relationship with your clients or prospects. Um, and, and so video is amazing at that. So some of my early stuff ups, um, I'm gonna go through five reasons uh, to do video and talk about some of my stuff ups, some of my learnings, um, and what you should be thinking about concentrating on. So uh, some of my early videos, I talked about some really boring topics. Um, so they were pretty dull in the way I spoke, pretty dull topics where people just didn't care. So to give you a quick view of some of those topics, I've got another quick snippet of those videos. So today we're talking about superannuation contributions or employer contributions. So employer contributions is your employers obliged legally to pay 9.5% of your this week's video, we're going to be talking about how to increase your superannuation balance uh, prior to retirement. So over the next couple of weeks, I'll give you three different examples. Today, we're talking about spouse superannuation contributions. So how, what it is, um, is contributing money into the um, non-working spouse superannuation. So if you're in a married or de facto relationship, today we're talking about superannuation co-contributions. So free money from the government. So how the co-contribution works, guys, is if you are earning less than, um, today we're talking about salary sacrificing. Salary sacrifice is money paid into your superannuation account um, before the ATO tax your income. So as you can see from those videos, uh, they're, they're fairly dull. Um, they're still good because they are videos. So uh, doing a video is better than, uh, so doing a dull, boring video on a dull, boring topic is still 100% better than doing no video at all. Um, but I wasn't being authentic to myself. Um, I don't wear ties anymore. And you can see um, I did a video about uh, retirees or for pre-retirees. Um, so I thought to myself, oh, I better wear a tie so I look more professional. Uh, and that's just, uh, for those of you who do know me, uh, that's really not authentic to who I am. Uh, I don't wear ties. Um, I barely wear collars um, these days. So um, I wasn't being authentic to myself. So uh, common question that people find, and, and this is what I ask myself is, uh, like, should I be myself or should I be someone that the topics that I'm talking to, so pre-retirees, they will much prefer to talk to an advisor with a suit and tie. Um, and I'm sure you've probably felt these questions yourself in business, um, even just sitting face to face with clients. Do I need to dress or act a certain way in front of these prospects um, to win the business? Um, and my view now um, is that you should be authentic to who you are. So um, for those of you who don't know this guy, his name's Gary V. Um, and I'd probably say he's one of the most authentic guys out there. Uh, I don't know him personally, but just the way he runs his business, he's, he's got a multi-million dollar marketing business, uh, works with some of the top com companies in America um, to manage their social media. And he does lots of videos, that creates plenty of content. And the amount of swearing he does in his content um, just shows you that he is 100% authentic to who he is. Um, and in fact, he did a recording once with uh, Simon Sinek, who is a guy who uh, wrote the book, Start With Why. Um, and they got a question on Gary's YouTube channel um, asking um, from someone who uh, has wrote, written a book about a serious topic about domestic abuse, um, except she works in a uh, R&B radio station. She's got shaved hair, she's got tattoos. And she asked them the question, Do I, should I release this book under a different name, under a different kind of um, pseudonym um, to, so I can get a greater reach or should I release it under my own name, even though people may not uh, relate as well to someone uh, with shaved head tattoos, works at an R&B station. And this is uh, their answer that they um, came to.
I'll take this one first and then jump in. Jay, look, the bottom line is it's not 1984 anymore. It's 2016. The, you're, you're not going to hide from who you are. People are going to figure out you have a shaved head and tattoos. Okay. You can go under a pseudo name. You can go in disguises. They're going to figure out who you are. So yeah. I think everybody wins when they go all in. Listen, I, you know, first 60 episodes of Wine Library TV, I, 2006, 10 years ago, I was tempered a little bit because I was scared that the people on Wall Street and these rich people that were buying hundreds of thousands of dollars a year of wine for me would realize I loved wrestling and football and I cursed that I was jerseyed out. The truth is, the second I realized, wait a minute, if people like this show with 80% of me, what's really going to happen? The second I went all in on me, it became a totally different outcome. And really, I've never looked back, both in the wine industry and who I am today. If you can live a life where the people that know you the best like you the most, you win. I love that my assistants, we were talking about India's one week, and like, like the people that know more about my truth win. Like, as we've gotten to know each other, yeah. we like each other more, that's not true. less. And that's the game. That's true. I mean, what's the definition of authenticity, right? Everybody's like trying to be authentic. Nobody <laughs> right. talks about what authenticity is. Authenticity is saying and doing the things you actually believe. And so to create divisions, one of them is inherently inauthentic. So in one of them, you're either being dishonest or you're faking it. So, uh, or you're hedging, or you're right? Hedging. Right? Hedging. So, hedging is what so, I mean, you are who you are and you want to bring that personality. And at the end of the day, the more authentic uh, you are in all of your work, the more the people who love you for who you are will take your work and will help spread it for you. So as Simon said, um, you are who you are and you want to bring that personality. And for me, that's no truer uh, than in video. Uh, you really want to use video to show your personality, to show your prospects, your customers, more about who you are. Um, and as I said, the more the people know you, the more they're going to like you. So the second reason to do video is to save yourself time. We can all agree that business uh, is getting harder and harder um, for all the Australians with the Royal Commission um, uh, that's come in and all the change to our industry. Uh, we, can, we can all agree that cost is going up uh, and we need to think about ways that we can save ourselves time unless you want to do 12 hour days, which I have no interest in that. So uh, one of my stuff ups, um, and well, to give you an example of saving time, um, creating videos of people ask you. Um, and so instead of uh, sitting in uh, a meeting uh, and explaining the exact same thing, the exact same way, every single client meeting, just thinking about, okay, if I can create a video about that uh, topic that I'm explaining in this meeting um, and I'm dedicating five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes to every client meeting, if I can create a video that really fleshes it out, helps the customer understand it better if they watch it later. And so in that meeting, I just need to touch on it for two minutes. Uh, I don't need to go into detail. I don't need to really get confirmation that they understand. I just touch on the topic for two minutes and then I follow up with a video about it later. So that'll save you so much time in client meetings um, and in client interactions. So one of my stuff ups is I was answering questions that nobody was asking. No one was asking me what superannuation code contributions are. I mean, I've had one uh, question about that in the last uh, seven years of being an advisor. So I was just answering questions that no one was asking. Um, so what I do now uh, is I just ask more common questions. As I said, I think about what are the topics that I talk about in every client meeting because they're the quickest and easiest ways to win in saving time. Um, and then from there, I, I went to collating questions from uh, potential clients. Even just, doesn't need to be educational, doesn't need to be about um, what you um, are talking about in your meetings, just can be uh, answering questions about how to get to your office or um, how to collect superannuation statements if that's what you need or uh, how to collect your home loan statements. So all of these things that we ask clients to get um, and they will email us or give us a call and say, well, I don't know how to do this. Can you help me? Uh, instead of dedicating time, your time or a, an admin assistance time, just creating videos and say, yeah, no worries, we've created a video to help you uh, as best as possible. So really understanding what clients are asking um, and creating videos around that. 
So the third reason to do video is to scale. Um, uh, we live in a world where uh, if we want to book a hotel, we just go on Airbnb or bookings.com and we can book it within seconds. Uh, if I want to get to the shops and I don't have a car, I just go uh, on the Uber app. Uh, if I'm really hungry, I'll just go get Uber Eats if I'm feeling really lazy. If I need to buy anything, um, I don't go down to the shops um, unless I need it that second, like I did this morning. I needed to get some speakers. Um, I will just go on Amazon.com and, uh, and purchase whatever I need um, or eBay. If I want to watch something, I'm bored, I'll, watch, I'll go to Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, Stan. I'll just go to these streaming services. So we live in a world that we are on demand. And in professional services, I don't think it's any different. Clients' expectations are exactly the same in the on-demand space because they're used to that. So it, no longer can we just say, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Client, I'm only available, you know, these times during working hours uh, to sit down one-on-one -on -one to have a meeting with you. Um, I believe that we live in a world where clients can – uh, get every other service um, on demand. So why can't they get financial services on demand? So they'll be expecting us to um, provide them information and for them to digest that information at a time that suits them. And that is where video is perfect for. Um, so per it's perfect to create. I, I mean, I in my business, what I do is I create uh, review um, videos where I review the client situation, get them to answer a few questions before the review, just so I make sure it's appropriate to their situation at the moment. And I create a review uh, video and I send it to them. They digest it, they can watch it multiple times. Um, and so they can uh, get it, uh, consume that information when it suits them. So one of my frequent, or one of the frequent stuff ups with scale. So the, the other thing with scale with creating marketing videos is uh, no longer uh, do you, you know, print a pamphlet, um, put it in letter boxes, and then that get chucked in the bin because uh, that pamphlet is only used once. They're either going to take action then and there or um, the pamphlet's useless. So the thing with uh, video is you've got the scale um, to be able to just continue to leverage that video time and time again. So same going back to answering the questions that you answer in meetings, you can use that time and time and time and time again. Uh, so you can save yourself five minutes every, um, every meeting and you just scale your time. Um, and one thing that I see all too often is people give up way too often on video marketing. When they look at it from a marketing point of view, they create one, two, five videos and they say, okay, what was the return on investment in that five videos? And I kind of look at it the same as if I was to have a client come to me and say, I want $100,000 invested and I invested it for them. And in a month's time, they said, oh, Phil, it's only gone up 1% or it's gone down 2%. Uh, I actually want to sell out um, because it hasn't uh, provided me the returns that I expected. And I think um, as advisors, we'd all recommend to that client and we'd all strongly suggest that we review what the long-term investment strategy was for that investment. It wasn't a one month return and take your money out. It was a long term play, even if the market's gone down or, or flattened out or even gone up a small amount. We, we try and encourage our clients not to look at the immediate return on investment uh, when we look at investments. So we shouldn't uh, treat our video investment the same way. Look at the one, two, three videos. What have we gotten? Nothing. Okay, that was a waste of time. And just to give you guys an example of my uh, videos, so I've, I've created, as I said, over 150 marketing videos and uh, not all of them have I put up on YouTube um, to be uh, ongoing. Uh, some of them are hidden um, on YouTube. You can, you can upload a video and not have it um, open to the public. Um, but I've got like 120 that are open to the public and that's 95,000. Um, minutes watched uh, in my videos. That's the equivalent as if I was sitting face to face with that uh, individual watcher for every single uh, hour of every single workday for a year uh, is the same amount of time as the amount of watch time. I've been uploading videos for four years. I'm um, by no means have gone viral in any of my videos. Uh, it's not about trying to make sure you go viral or bust. Uh, it's just about 
continual investment. Just the same as our philosophy around investments, continually investing in videos, uh, you'll get that scale. Over time, it'll build and build and build, and people will come back and watch more videos. To give you just a, an example, in my last 12 months, so I uploaded videos, uh, I uploaded eight videos in 2018. Uh, as Steve said, I invested a lot of time in building out the course, which basically um, put uh, the brakes on creating videos. I also opened up a cafe with friends of mine, which also meant that uh, my video marketing was kind of on the back burner. So I only uploaded eight videos on YouTube. Um, and as you can see, I've got almost 16,000 views in 2018. Um, and 40,000 minutes of watch time. And most of that isn't from the, the vi each uh, of those eight videos. In fact, they got very uh, small amount of views. Um, most of those views and those watch times is from videos I created two, three, four years ago now. Um, so that's what video marketing can do. Um, and uh, I just kind of want to repeat myself. It is not about going viral. Um, you know, there's no, I mean, sure, going viral would be good, um, but the long-term play, there's not real huge value in, in a video going viral. Um, just about people uh, wanting to consume my content over and over um, that gives me that scale. Um, so time I invested back four years ago, I'm seeing returns on that even still today. Um, so the fourth reason is to grow. Um, so you know, we're in business to make money. So we want, we want to grow our business. So my stuff ups um, is I just know had no strategy around my videos. I just created videos, answered questions, even questions that no one was asking, put them up on YouTube and said, all right, sweet, let's go from there. Um, and so what I do now is I've got a, a more comprehensive content plan. So um, how that looks is I create uh, kind of lead magnets. So you know, simple money checklists, three simple ways to pay less tax and guide to paying off your home loan sooner. They're just really simple guides that people can download. Um, and what that means is I can gather, um, you know, their email list and I can market to them more uh, specifically um, to those clients and be in their face more and not just expect YouTube to put my videos in front of uh, their eyeballs, um, but I can uh, get in front of them through emails. So what I've created in that comprehensive content plan is uh, I've looked at my client avatar, so who I want to talk to, um, created campaigns around certain topics, created lead magnets, and what I do now is like a six video series. Um, when someone comes to my uh, YouTube channel or looks at my videos, they don't necessarily see it as a video series. I don't call it a video series. You can, um, and it's you know maybe appropriate, but I personally don't. Um, so what I do is I just create uh, videos around a certain topic loosely. Um, and, and that's a little bit better. Well, I mean, it's, it's a lot better strategy in actually driving growth to my business. So the fifth thing is to educate. Uh, I believe it's, in, it's really important uh, on us as advisors. Um, you know, we talk about financial literacy in Australia is low and we talk about how, you know, clients aren't educated there's you know not as much financial literacy um, and I believe it's it's uh, important for us as advisors not just to say that it needs to improve but we need to take it on ourselves to improve it um, because you know we are in business to make money but we also are in business to help people um, and educating people even if they aren't paying us money even if they are not clients is important so my stuff ups um, is uh, even for my existing clients, I expected in my meetings for clients to retain information. We go through an hour meeting, we talk about all these different strategies and I expected them naively just to retain a lot of that information. Um, when now what I do is I follow up every meeting with uh, some videos. So if I talk about superannuation, insurance, mortgages, whatever I talk about in a client meeting, I'll follow up with some additional information around the topics that we've discussed. Um, it helps the client. Um, it shows that I'm empathetic, that they are not going to retain all the information we've discussed. Um, and it helps them uh, feel more comfortable with me as a service provider, as an advisor who is not just there just to make money from them. Um, and I, they're not, I'm, I don't see my clients as a revenue source, but I see my clients as, uh, as a partnership. I'm there to help them, to help educate them uh, to get the best outcome for them. So Tomo, what's, a, what's an example, just one that might be the most, 
I suppose, relevant across borders as well of something where you have a, a normal client meeting where you would then follow it up with, with a video. And, and is this a, uh, a specific, cause I know you love using loom a lot. Is this where you would use a, you record an individual video or are you talking about saving time by having a content stack that you would send depending on what the meeting type was? Yeah, uh, both actually. So uh, when I have a meeting with a client, I'll follow up with a Loom video. Uh, I mean, not all of them, probably 80% of the meetings I have, I follow up with a video. Um, and but, so I will follow up with a personalized video, which I'll show you in the webinar how to do that. But I will have, you know, as you said, a content stack. So I know if I've got a mortgage broken client come in, we're going to talk about fixed versus variable interest. Um, we're going to talk about uh, you know, different areas of a home loan. Most of my clients are first home buyers. Um, and so they you know, buying a house for the first time is pretty complex. There's lots of areas that you've never had to think about before. So I will educate clients in the meeting about it. Um, but then I will have videos fixed versus variable that I will follow up in that uh, email. And I'll say, Hey, these are the next steps. Also, we did discuss this. If you do want to just uh, go over it, um, get a bit more information. And if you do have any extra questions off the back of our meeting, um, then let's touch base. So both, I follow up with a personalized video and I have like a content stack, as you said. Um, and, and most businesses I recommend should do that because you're gonna be talking to the, the same type of client about the exact same topics every single day. Um, so why not build out uh, your content stack or your education stack um, off the back of your meetings? Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. And guys on the chat, uh, if you are one of the, the few, I know most of you aren't using video now, but those of you that are, just give us some examples of, of some of the stuff that you might be doing that's similar um, to Phil and, and remember any questions that you've got, fire them through as well. Yeah, feel free to uh, jump in with any questions at any time, guys. I probably won't review it, but Steve will jump in uh, with some questions. So we're gonna go into different types of video styles. So I've kind of talked about why you should do video, but this is gives you a really clear understanding of the different video styles that, that I use in my business. Um, so not talking about the, the actual content, but just the styles of how you can um, use videos in your business. So I've created a video to show you the different styles. <laughs> I do all of my marketing videos in this style. So I, I call it talking head. So you see, uh, you know, the top half of my body uh, and my head uh, talking. Oh, sorry guys. With the camera. So this is a rough guide of what a video review might look like. The way I run it for my clients is I um, have a PDF document already prepared. Another area that video will be really um, big for in your practice is internal communication. So whether it's uh, training videos, which I highly recommend you do, or just um, you know uh, feedback, um, recording quick videos for internal communication. The other video style is client education. So you may just have some. Uh, little tips and tricks for your clients that you may want to just create a personalized video for. Uh, so you may have a client asking about diversification, what it is, how it works, uh, and you may want to just record a personalized video for those clients. So how I do it is I make sure they can see me as well as a computer screen uh, with any collateral I use to support um, the education. So the other type of video are the vlogging style videos. This can work really well if you've got video content uh, around motivational videos or talking about mindset. So if you're going to do content around um, your money mindset or getting motivated to refinance your property, uh, anything around building businesses, uh, these vlogging style type of videos uh, can work really well for that. And also, if you are moving the camera or you are walking, uh, people are used to seeing the camera move a little bit. So the camera doesn't need to be perfectly still if you're doing these type of videos. However, they can be super effective 
uh, because they're a little bit more enjoyable to watch. So they don't need to be just a boring standard. You're standing in front of a camera. Um, you can do a little bit more about your day, about who you are, um, and show a bit more personality in these blogging style videos. So there's also the interview video style where two people are on screen. So where one of them is interviewing the other. So just like this. Lilla, what are you looking forward to most about Christmas? Maybe the presents and spending time with my friends. So this is one interview style that you can do. Uh, and there's also another interview style where you've just got your client uh, or the one subject on the screen, which I'll show you right now. And who is the best daddy in the whole entire world? You. And who's the best mummy in the whole entire world? Mummy! All right, guys, so that gives you a better idea of like the different styles of videos, um, but the actual content, how to create content. Uh, this, I'll give you some video ideas uh, here. Um, so I will, I will kind of rush through this because I do want to show you how to create video, uh, personalized videos. I will show you in this webinar and I do want to get to Q&A as well. So uh, for me, clients are in uh, one, you know, one of four stages. They're in awareness stage, um, so educational type videos, how-tos. Uh, if they're in the consideration stage, they're trying to work out, are you the best advisor for me? Um, and they're more marketing style videos, so showing your value uh, to, to those clients. You've also got on the onboarding stage. So communicating to your clients who are becoming clients, uh, your uh, business processes. So how you run your first meeting, um, what information they need to gather for you. Um, those type of videos are really helpful in that stage. And then the servicing stage. So just client communication. So either personalized videos that I'll show you um, or um, just videos to help them along that journey of um, ongoing servicing. And then you've also got internal training and internal communication video ideas. Um, so I'm sure there's um, everyone watching you, there's plenty of ideas uh, that you can come out just from that one slide. So implementing videos. So I'm going to quickly touch on what I call the priority pyramid. So um, for me, the bottom is the most important when creating videos all the way up uh, to the top. So uh, audio is the most important thing. If your audio is bad or you can barely hear it, people are just going to switch off no matter uh, what type of content, no matter what it is, uh, is really going to be uh, a killer for your, um, for your video. So just making sure however you're setting up your videos, your audio is relatively clear. You can go all the way up into having really nice crisp audio, um, but the number one is just don't have really, really bad audio. Uh, the thing next is content. Uh, if your content's really bad, really boring, and people are going to switch off, it's really not very interesting at all. And then on top of that is the delivery. So how you deliver um, the content, uh, how you deliver, uh, and what I mean by delivery, I don't mean uh, do you upload to YouTube, Facebook. I mean how you speak on camera and how you move on camera. Um, that is really important because if you talk, really slow people are just going to switch off and be so uninterested lighting is also really important if you've got really bad lighting and you look like you're in a dungeon uh, then it just looks really unprofessional uh, the next thing is a steady camera if you're doing like a talking head the only time your camera can move is if you're doing that vlogging style video so making sure you have a steady camera don't just have your assistant um, or your partner um, hold the camera while you're recording your video um, just get a cheap tripod um, and it's really easy just to make sure you have a steady camera. And then next is framing. So framing your video, um, it's just important, just makes it look that much more professional. Uh, it's just a really simple touch um, that most people don't really understand how to do it, um, but it just makes it look that, um, bit, that much more professional. So gonna go into uh, personalized videos. So I'm gonna show you, um, I'm going to get out of this presentation somehow and then show you how to do personalized videos. Um, Steve, you can just confirm that you can see my screen. Yeah, mate, we're on your Loom window right. now. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Loom is the best software I've ever used in my business. I am in love with it. Um, I wish I owned some of it uh, because I think it's amazing. Um, 
So what it is, is just video capturing software. Um, super simple. Uh, they do have a, like a basic and a pro. Um, you can go through their pricing structure to work out you know, what's most important. Um, but basically, just sign up. Um, you can sign up for free. I'm gonna sign up with my um, personal Gmail account so you don't see all my client videos in there. Um, Oh yeah, so this is the, the videos I recorded at uh, LTMA 19. Um, so you'll get all of these things. What is going on here? But basically, at the end of the day, um, once you've signed up, what you do is you just download a um, a little what is it? A widget or something on your on your Google Chrome, and you can just super super easily record a video when you're in your Gmail or or um, any website, you can just record a video so easy. You've got options to record your screen and your camera. Um, I don't think it's showing my camera because I'm on Zoom. Um, but you can just do your screen only. So you can um, just have your logo right down the bottom. So you can just show your screen, which will just show your desktop or will show a PDF document or will show um, uh, you know, your Google Chrome or you can just do camera only. So uh, again, this isn't working for me because I'm using Zoom, um, so it blacks out the um, camera, but you can just show yourself. So you can just do a personalized video um, for a client. And it's so easy that all you need to do is work out what you wanna record, and then you click start recording. You work out which you know screen you want. I've got three screens, so I just want this middle screen. It'll give you a countdown and then it'll start recording when that uh, goes to the pause button. You can just really simply record a video, and as soon as you're finished recording your video, you just click this finish, this big green tick. And as soon as you hit that big green tick, it'll automatically upload that video. Um, now, if it's a short video, it'll automatically upload it really, really quickly, uh, and you can start, start recording when that, you can just start watching it straight away. And uh, I'm not sure any of those, any of you out there who noticed that uh, notification down the bottom, as soon as you hit um, uh, that big tick, it automatically uh, puts the, the link to that video that I just created uh, into my clipboard so I can just paste it straight away. So if I just change this, um, And that should, yeah, see that changed the name video test. Well, what will I do? So now I can just email this to Steve. I'm on my personal emails, I don't have your email. Just email it to Steve or any client, subject line, and I can just write a, a note just to say, hey Steve, just recorded this quick video just off the back of our meeting. Uh, it was really good that we caught up. Um, as I mentioned in the video, here are the best next steps to take for us to engage um, better, um, whatever your process for your business is. Um, it's really, really easy to fit videos or personalized videos into your existing uh, business processes. Um, so use Loom is by far the best software I've ever used uh, to create really simple videos. Lots of people have wanted to start doing videos um, and what they've done is they have um, gone in, wanted to uh, create a video on their phone, upload it to YouTube. Once it's uploaded, get the link off YouTube um, and then embed it into an email. Um, and that, just, that process alone just means that it's just a barrier to entry. If, you're, if you have to do more steps just to get a video to a client, you're just simply not gonna do it. But Loom, as I said, um, all you need to do is click this button up here, determine how you want to record it, what style you want to record, and then hit the record button. You may need to look at these, these settings to work out, okay, what microphone am I going to use? What camera am I going to use? Um, if you don't have a webcam, you're not on a laptop and you don't have a webcam, then just, just record your screen. You can just go to your um, company website and just record the screen because even just your voice um, is helpful. Um, but really webcams are so cheap, 30 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks just for a webcam uh, to create that no like and trust relationship and make it even stronger with new clients. Um, it's such an easy way to do it. And as you, as you can see, embeds that uh, straight in there, they can click on it and you can just write, 
you know, the email however you need to. Uh, and then sent straight away. So I'm, I've quickly gone over that. I'm sure you guys have got questions about that, but we are gonna just go shoot to a poll now, Steve. Steve? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Just turn myself off mute I'm and sure starting it. Asleep, mate. I've just right. ducked, I just ducked outside. I wasn't even here for the last 20 minutes. I'm sure <laughs> it was good. Um, all right. So next poll. I really want to know what, over the next 12 months, uh, what do you plan to execute on? So do you want to do personalized client videos? So uh, what I've just shown you, you want to do more, even just one client a week, creating a personalized video. Um, are you planning on uh, recording client reviews or client meetings? Um, or do you want to create uh, internal training videos or create some marketing videos? So more, uh, more professional marketing videos. So Next maybe question. while we're getting the questions and those questions answered, the guys will move through that one at their yeah, own yeah. speed. Uh, Jason Ingold's got a good question, which always comes up. Any security issues around sending client information via video? Cool. Great question. So um, I will, while you guys are doing that poll, um, actually, can we just, let's just hurry up and get that poll done. Anyone who is still waiting on, hurry up, because I just want to show you, um, I actually don't know what it looks like from your end, guys, so if, if you can still see my screen. Yeah, we're still on your video test screen. All right, cool, cool. About, I'm with, uh, those of you that haven't done a, an AM webinar before, we don't move. It's all about action with us. So we need to get to at least 75% of the vote before we, uh, before we move on. And, and I mean, I'll sit here all day. I've got nothing else to do. I, I, I don't work. Uh, we're at 60 that, mate. We then, six, Tomo's like, come on, people. Just vote. 68%. I, got a meeting you go to. I don't wear collars very often. I'm, I've, got a, I've got a meeting. You need a rash probably under that. Um, yeah. we're at 68%, we 33, we've got 13, we're almost there, 72%. Come on, if you haven't voted, vote now, 74%. We're nearly there. Come on, number 36, whoever you are. You just, you just need to put like three answers to three questions. It's not that hard. Please don't leave us hanging on 74%. That would be devastating. Um, we are waiting. We're literally waiting for one more person to vote and then I will move on, Tomo. All there right, we go. Guys. 36, 37, done. Thank you, family. Here are Tomo's. Tomo just needs feedback. This is all this is about. This isn't about you. This is 100% about him. Go. 100%. So I'm going to talk about that poll in a second, but I'm just going to answer this question from Jason. That's a really good question, Jason. So Loom does have features to password protect it. Um, so as... As with any uh, video can you compensate it from if you're not allowed to um, have any information on any servers outside of Australia, um, you're gonna have a lot of trouble using any technology, let's be honest. Um, but just in terms of how to um, be comfortable um, housing client data, you can password protect it. Um, so the clients have to um, put in their password before they can watch the video. Um, you can, you know, all the videos, um, they aren't searchable. Um, so you can't just search Loom for any video out there. It's a, it's a different software provider than YouTube. YouTube want people to find uh, videos organically. Um, but Loom is all about personalized videos. So, you know, there's a lot of settings here. You can, um, you know, get rid of viewer downloads, get rid of analytics, get rid of the emojis. Um, you can remove um, comments. Um, and then password protecting um, the the video. So I hope I hope that answers your question. Uh, just around the security issues and the security concerns. Um, and so you, obviously you do need to just touch base with the compliance team around uh, what you are and are not not allowed to do. So just going back to that poll quickly. Um, uh, Seventy eight percent said they're going to do personalised videos. Awesome. I think that is the quickest, easiest win. Uh, off the back of this webinar, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to, um, you basically need to spend all of two minutes setting up your Loom account um, and really it doesn't even take two minutes and start recording videos. Um, so really good. 47% uh, said they want to require, record client reviews or client meetings. 24% um, they want to do internal videos uh, and 62% want to create marketing videos. Um, awesome. 
Um, do you feel like you can start executing after this webinar? Ninety-five percent said yes. Wonderful. That is that's that's where the ego gets really big, mate. Um, Five percent said no. Get stuff, but that's okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll forgive you guys. Um, now, um, and then the third question is: If you needed help, uh, what areas do you think you needed most help in? Uh, so, getting confidence in front of the camera. That's thirty percent of people said that. Getting the setup right, 38% said that. 27% uh, understanding the process. 41 structuring my time to get it done. 24% um, said all of the above. Awesome. So um, I'm just going to quickly talk about the video course. So let me just... Oh, okay. So really... Uh, that the question around you know what do you need help with that's really why I created the video course uh, so really uh, the whole the whole reason Steve asked me to do it and the whole reason I spent you know over stupid amounts of hours creating it a lot more than I ever expected um, was because I over four years I've kind of made heaps of mistakes spent plenty of time doing the wrong things and I realized that um, actually this isn't as easy as much as I kind of fumbled my way into it. Um, it would be awesome just to have something where I can pick up and, and run with it and know exactly what to do, uh, the whole process. Um, and when Steve came to me and said, you know, I'd love you to create this video course. Uh, and he said, it will you know, only take you 10 hours to build. Um, woefully underestimated it. I said, yep. Yeah, I think this is really valuable um, because so many people want to create videos in their business, um, but just don't understand how to do it. So what the video course gets you um, is over five and a half hours of video content. Um, it's unlimited access. So you can buy it once and you, when you, if you don't execute for another two months, three months, and you're going to forget everything in this webinar, because I don't know about you, webinars are great and awesome, but uh, if you don't implement straight away, you're probably going to forget about it. So you're going to have to wait four months before we do another webinar about video um, before you can kind of relearn that information. So you get unlimited access to the course. There's a 24 page workbook just to help you guide you along the process. Uh, as I said, five and a half hours of videos um, that goes really in depth about how to create personalized videos, how to create more marketing videos, how to edit the video. Um, really in-depth section around editing, whether you do it in-house, a team member does it, or you outsource it, just understanding uh, the editing process is really important. I talk about the recording process. Um, I think it's an amazing course. I'd spent over 300 hours creating it. Um, and so you can have go from no experience um, up to creating professional videos um, just using this course. And it can be used from solo practitioners to large scale business. So everyone who said that they feel like they just don't have the time to fit it in or don't know how to fit it in, um, that's, that's what I've done. I'm a solo advisor um, and mortgage broker. I've got three young kids, I'm plenty busy, um, but I found the time to be able to create videos and learn how to do it. And I didn't have a resource like this video course. So the other thing is the video course plus the toolkit. So what does the toolkit get you? So um, the video course is included in this uh, and you get pre-written video scripts. So um, for the Aussie advisors, um, these video scripts are really, really relevant. American uh, team, I'm not sure how relevant it is, um, but just understanding how I've actually structured the videos, uh, in this, the script um, is really helpful. But uh, Tom, with our, because, we, because we love... Uh, we love America. Uh, I'm sure if enough of our American crew asked nicely, we'd be able to, with a bit of research and I can help because I know a lot about what the US guys are after, try and maybe come up with a few templates that we could put together for them. Well, yeah, no, that's that's right. Over time, I'm, I'm actually going to build out the, the video scripts. So I'm going to create more and some will be just more around uh, generic finance topics. So not about any um, specific, it won't be region based. So it'll be around concepts, around um, investing concepts. So it doesn't need to be about investing in X or, or invest in B, but around the, uh, the way of thinking of investing, investing for long term. Um, so yeah, definitely um, if, if we get enough American um, buyers, for sure we'll create content. I mean, I'm gonna do it anyway, um, but it'll just speed up that process. <laughs>
The other thing you get with the toolkit, which I find, I think is the most amazing thing, I'm actually gonna show it, is the um, editing software template. Um, this might not sound like much on a piece of paper, but this takes a long time to build yourself. Um, I've got you know these sliders that come in and out. You just need to create your logo. You change the, um, the colors of all of these things. Uh, the other things, you have these transitions, you don't need to build yourself. It is all in that toolkit. Um, and that, you know, when I say uh, editing software template, it doesn't sound that sexy, but it'll save you about an hour or two building that template for yourself. So the question's going to come, so let's just ask it. Is that, what software is that? Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay. So we've got, already got a question, a couple of, I mean, so can we do a couple of quick questions while we're doing yeah. this? Probably yeah. answers why you built the toolkit stuff. Yeah, for sure. Because when I was talking to Tom about building this, he's like, what's the difference between a workbook and a toolkit? I said, a toolkit is all the stuff that you know you're going to have to go and build. Give me templates of things that stops. I love calling my toolkits the no excuses pack because as soon as we do these things and when you do a course, you go, this is all great in theory, but now I've got to go and build a heap of shit that's going to take me forever. So I said, go and start building that so they can just edit it. Um, so if it's uh, Adobe, you said Adobe Premiere, was that right? Yeah, yeah. And does that work? That works on um, Mac and PC, I'm assuming. And roughly, what's yeah, the cost? Yeah, that's that? across across both. I've got both a Mac laptop and a PC um, desktop, and I basically just switch throughout the whole editing process. It's really easy. Okay, and the rough cost in Aussie dollars? Yeah, it's 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 a monthly subscription. Uh, so I, I think like twenty bucks a month. So yeah. it is a bit of an investment. Um, and just to touch on that, uh, all the course where I talk about editing, um, there's very few Adobe specific um, tips. Everything can be done on any editing software, um, except there are a few really small tips on um, within the editing part of the course. But basically the whole course can be done whatever. And I talk about different options in editing software. So I don't say you need to use Adobe. Uh, in the course I go through the different software providers. Um, so Daniel had a question as well um, uh, around using uh, captions. So uh, da, 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 where she said, what software do you have to have subtitles, text on the video and transcript of video audio? So obviously you've got mobs like Rev that you can send stuff out to. So maybe um, captions is a big one. I've seen some videos that people do where they just use the bog standard caption function. Yeah. Um, and it, it looks pretty shit. Like what, what, so one, what's your view on captions? And, and then two, what's the best way to go about it? Because they can be a bit, a bit of a pain in the ass to do, can't they? Yeah, 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 they, they can. So captions, um, I use rev.com to uh, gather the captions. So you send the video to them. They basically pull, give you back a file that timestamps all your words. Um, and so it's really easy, costs a dollar a minute. So I use that um, that service provider to get me the captions and to input that captions. Um, in the video course, I show you how to go through that whole thing. Um, and and without going into the weeds a bit, you, what, what you need to do is you just input that captions straight into Adobe. You basically drag and drop, and then you've got your embedded captions. And then I can help on this one because I actually figured this one out. Um, another little tip is you can put a, like a solid, hang on, I'll put my video on so you can see me doing this. You put like a solid bar um, across the back and you, you sit it behind the captions. Tomo, do you do that? Because it just makes it stand out and pop a little bit better. Because sometimes with the captions, it's, they have it as see-through background and it doesn't work as good. But if you just put like just a little column bar and it sits behind it, it makes it stand out a bit better as well. Yeah, so so in Adobe, it just automatically does that. I I have a little bit of a, I prefer, I mean, it's just more of a, a personal view. I like it to be um, not just pure black. I like to make that back a little bit see-through. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, now we've got some other questions. I'll stay on video here uh, as well. And that was rev.com. Yeah, Tomo? That's right. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, a dollar a minute. A dollar a minute. That's uh, so what's what? So it's like for a seven minute, so seven minute of talking video will cost you seven bucks. Yeah, yeah. And well, then seven, seven minutes and two seconds will cost you eight dollars. Yeah. Right. So you've talked about um, 
and I know you did this at, at LTMA as well. You talked about the idea of, you know, repurposing your content as well. Have you, have you gone to that stage with any of your stuff, like getting the, the stuff transcribed and then reproducing it or, or not yet? I mean, I've got every video transcribed, um, but reproducing it, I'm just, I just haven't invested the time, energy and effort into doing it, but it's definitely something you could do with very little effort. Um, I mean, some of the templates I use, um, I actually just ripped out of some of my videos. Uh, not exactly, but I redid them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I've got it all, but I don't, I don't repurpose very well. Um, so a couple of questions uh, again here, and I think we'll keep these two. We can smush these together. So um, I'll, I'll get Cassandra's one around transcribing videos later. There's one around, but Anna's asked one about um, updates of software versus is it automatic? And then um, Danielle's asked another one on whether or not Loom, you know, is the freebie. What's the difference between the freebie version and, and the other one and the paid one? Uh, so the difference between the free and the paid for Loom, um, just give me a second. I'll just share my screen again. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, all the features are here. So you know, the free version, you've got a, um, a video limit, a cap on how many videos you can store. Um, you know, the, the paid version, you can have like a desktop app so you can you can re record like a square. So if you, I wanted to record, oh, I can't see it, but if I wanted to record like a square, just a small part of the um, of my desktop, I can. You can have like the mouse click. So anytime you click it, it has a, you know, a, a big circle around it. Um, so, uh, you know, my view is having the ability to store more videos is really good if you're doing internal videos. Um, however, it's not, it's not super necessary if you wanted to go um, like this video test, I can go and download that video. Um, it's automatically downloading it. So if you've got like a Dropbox or something that you want to store the videos, you can. It's just more mucking around. Um, so yeah, just go to loom.com slash pricing to really get a good in idea about the free versus paid for Loom. And yeah, and then in terms of upgrading and automatic, some of the software is and some of it isn't. I'm using Camtasia, which is just another piece of video editing software. Um, you know, it's probably a, a competitor to Adobe and it just comes down to what you're comfortable with. Uh, they, they don't give automatic upgrades, but I'm still rocking the software from two years ago and it does everything that I need. As soon as it doesn't, then I'll consider upgrading it. But do you find the same with Tom, with yours, Tomo? Well, generally speaking, if it's a subscription service, it'll automatically update. Yeah. You will automatically get a new one. Um, if it's a once off cost, it'll be set. You, you get what you yeah. paid for at that time you paid for it and that's it. Um, so I know we're over time, guys. We're going to keep hanging and answering Q&A and so stick around if you do have more. Um, Cass Martin asked the purpose of transcribing videos. Um, so for us, when we're starting to do it, it's for multi-use, multi, multi -use, so using it as a blog post. Um, if we're going to create any sort of audio file, um, for us here, we're, uh, we're going to rip the audio out of this webinar and turn it into a podcast which has got nothing to do with transcribing but you know there you go it's two for one tomo and he didn't even have to do it because if i asked him to do a podcast he'd tell me to get stuffed he's already done enough for us um interestingly i saw a piece of software um and it was actually a really famous an, an american uh, advisor youtuber called jeff rose who i know the americans will know and a lot of the aussies will know as well he um he shared a link to a, a company that for starting for 200 starting at 250 bucks a month they would start to repurpose your youtube content into um formats for facebook insta stories um they'd pull out an audio file they'd pull out a text file so i think what we're going to find is a lot of what tom is talking about is getting you started and then but it's, it's pointless doing things these days in your business where it's like $1 of investment for $1 of return. You've got to start thinking about how can I get more bang for my buck with this stuff? Um, and I think obviously what Phil's trying to do is saying, well, look, you don't have to go and pay all these businesses three, four, four, you know, two, three, 400 bucks a month to do this stuff. You know, the software's there in it and it's not that hard with a little bit of help to get up and going. Is that, that sounds about right, mate. 
Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I, just to answer that question about transcribing, if you just look at any social feeds these days and you look at videos, almost all videos, it's, it's kind of a trend um, that all videos have uh, text as a part of their video. Even um, So there's two ways of doing it. You can kind of have it where YouTube or Facebook um, have the uh, text, but as soon as you turn sound on, the text turns off, or you can hard embed the text into your video. So these days now I hard embed it. Um, because that's just that's just a trend at the moment um, is to have captions a part of the videos because majority of videos viewed on Facebook I think 80% are viewed without sound um, and so you want people to be able to be more interested be able to capture that um, content without needing to have the the audio there as well yeah guys we've got any other questions I know we are as always over time shock shock horror that we don't get to the end on time but it's good your questions have been great no? Well, uh, join me in thanking Phil, I wear, collar, I wear collars on a special occasion, uh, Thompson, our video expert. If you do have any questions at all, uh, hit us up in the Facey group as well. Tomo loves hanging out there, ignoring everyone's question unless it's video related and it makes him look good. Um, you can watch the replay on our YouTube channel, which will be up there live uh, tomorrow. Uh, and keep an eye out for the replay on the virtual pass of the LTMA 19 conference session that uh, Tomo will be sharing his stuff in there again. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining us, Tomo. Thank you for your awesome. amazing Thanks, episode. everyone, for watching. Uh, and keep an eye out. We've got another webinar coming up in another two weeks, so we'll send you an email out about that. Until then, bye for now.